Castrol South Africa are proud to present the 1995 Castrol International Rally. As the premier rallying event in South Africa, the Castrol International Rally draws its own following of both competitors and spectators alike. As the first round of the All-African Rally Championship, entrants from across the northern borders join the local drivers and navigators for three days of punishing motorsport. With them come machinery, the likes of which the local drivers seldom see. Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi, in their Castrol Toyota Conquest, have an unbroken record of victory this season and would dearly love to add the Castrol to their list, a title last year's winner, Hannes Krobler, intends to keep. Uh, at the moment, we're feeling very good, the car's very good, and uh, I hope we can repeat the win from last year on the Castrol. And uh, I see there's a lot of entries here, uh, some in good international entries, and uh, I think we're going to have a uh, very stiff competition here. As A-grade international license holders, Ian Duncan and Dave Williamson automatically head the 59-strong field. The multiple Kenyan rally champions and winners of last year's Tough Safari Rally could be the crew that the previously luckless Serge and Vito will have to beat. Well, um, the Kestrel has been a bit of a doubtful event for me. Uh, we usually seem to start the, the year very well and then by the Kestrel things seem to go wrong a bit. But I'm quite confident this year that uh, we should have a clean run. Ian, you the guy that everybody sort of sees as giving Serge a go on this Castrol rally. Is that putting pressure on you at all? Um, a little bit. I, I'm not so sure what's going to happen. We're going to go reasonably quickly, start off with and see, and then maybe we'll be miles behind. I don't know. It's got a very quick car. I think on the fast uh, stretches, it will go very well. It's not the best for these stages, that's for sure. But I think when they're a bit more flowing, the car is going to be a lot better than it is. So it, it's, it's not that bad, that's for sure. We all know that it's a very well-built car and uh, those things can go forever. But uh, what we actually tend to do, maybe uh, the South Africans, we seem to take it as a sprint race and we, you know, we usually go flat out from the start. For the regroup, seeing this event is not going to be a regroup tonight, so it's not going to make any difference. So that's probably everybody's going to settle themselves in. The Kenyan crew mount the starting ramp in Ermelo, thereby officially bringing the 1995 Castrol International Rally under starter's orders. Behind them and second on the road is last year's winner Hannes Krobler, now driving with Cape Townian Pierre Aries in the privately entered Bankford Nissan Centra. Duncan powers the turbocharged Toyota Celica into stage one, an 8.4 kilometer dash through the streets of Ermelo, as Serge and Vito take their place on the ramp. All right, go! Hannes Krobler and Pierre Aries start stage one. Spectators from far and wide join the local Ermelo crowd that line the course through the town. Duncan posts a cautious time of 5 minutes and 23 seconds through the stage. 200 crossroad 90 right. 100 crossroad 90 right. 300, turn off 90 right and immediately 90 right. 200, turn off 90 right and immediately 90 right. 100, turn off 90 right and immediately 90 right. Krobler attacks the stage with a bit more pace, seven seconds faster than the Kenyan crew. 750 turn off 90 right. 550 turn off 90 right. On the ramp, the all Cape Town crew, Brady Dabner and Guy Hodgson, as into the stage go Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi. The Toyota crew get right down to business, winning the stage in a time of 5 minutes and 14 seconds. After a dismal start to their rallying season, Jan Habich and Douglas Judd have come to the Castrol rally intent on changing their run of bad luck. Looking down the field to 8th position on the road, Billy Rotenbach and Johann Sielung from the Hyundai Racing Stable in their newly built Hyundai Accent. Back on the road for the first time this season, Elisio Miranda and Tony Velaka thomas From Namibia, Fritz Flachberger and Vickers Bruver in the Cosworth-powered Ford Escort RS. Also 
also down from Kenya for the All-African Championship, Harbin De Seti with Surinda Tati in the Toyota Celica Turbo. Interest in the Castrol Rally was raised this year with the inclusion of the off-road fraternity for an event within an event, the Video Sport Off-Road Challenge. Kasi Kutsia leads this 14-strong field. Once again, the Class C entry was to be the most competitive, with the Toyota Conquest of Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley up against the radio unit's car of Glenn Derman and Dave Levkovitz. From the tar streets of Ermelo to the loose, dusty forest roads near Amsterdam. Early on to the retirement list was Billy Rotenbach when the Hyundai broke a rocker arm in stage two. Also out early was the Leon Boerter Nissan sidelined with bent valves. Driving blindly through their own dust on stage three, Ian Duncan misjudged a right-hand turn and perched the Toyota Celica on the roadside embankment, losing three and a half minutes in the process. With the help of logs and the on-board jack, Ian and Dave free the Toyota, bouncing and jumping the Celica over the failed tree stumps. <laughs> Making up the three-minute gap between the cars, Harness and Pierre pass the luckless Kenyan crew, confirming their lost time in the stage. Having been beaten on stage two by Duncan and Williamson, Surge powers the conquest through stage three. They cover the 11 kilometer stage in six minutes and 58 seconds. Hubbard and Judd push the Volkswagen to its limits, desperate to stay on the pace being set by the leading Toyota and Nissan crews. The Castrol caravan is an oasis for its guests as the rally cars kick up an endless cloud of dust around them. Nuna de Cunha and Francois Pretorius in the second class A Nissan Sentra. Blinded by their own dust, many of the drivers are forced to slow their pace as they make their way to Amsterdam for the first break after five stages and prepare for the border crossing. Serge, leading off the five stages, a slim lead, but the dust seems to be quite bad in these last few stages. Well, we've had a clean stages. Uh, we haven't had any problem with dust and everything seems to be going quite smoothly for us. Now, it's just with 13 odd seconds, I think you've got on Hannes at this stage, is it? Um, on the last stage, we took a little bit more off him. So, um, it's 19 seconds, I, I believe, but uh, it's quite, still quite close for, you know, five stages. The break at Amsterdam allows the service crews to prepare the cars for the twilight stages to be run in the Osutu forests across the border in Swaziland. start stage six in their drawn starting order. Duncan and Williamson are down in 16th place on the scoreboard after they're off in stage three and face a long fight up the score sheet. As the sun sinks below the mountains, the still evening air hangs heavy with dust, adding a richer contrast to the sunset. The stillness broken only by the roar of the rally cars. For the convenience of the spectators, a fast food outlet in the bush. One by one, with a three minute gap between them, the rally cars enter the dry forest stages. Serge is only able to equal Ian Duncan's time on stage six, the Kenyan crew Seneca more suited to the faster open stages. On a scrobler complains of fuel pressure problems with a Nissan. Running third on the road, Serge has the dust to contend with. After winning stage seven, Duncan departs the service area for stage eight. Hubbock's Golf lost time in stage five when a rear drive shaft broke. In stage eight, the leading crew of Duncan and Williamson encounter a vehicle on the route, a surprise for both drivers. Serge and Vito take back 11 seconds from the Kenyan crew on the stage, the South Africans having a clear run. 
We join Jan Habich and Douglas Judd in stage eight. Besides overshooting this bend, Jan has to contend with a misfire in the motor and is forced to nurse the golf to the end of the stage, losing more time to the leaders. The golf also lost a drive belt to the water pump, causing the motor to overheat. Just leave it. So, after 11 stages completed, Serge and Vito hold a lead of just over three minutes on Harness and Pierre. Ian Duncan and Dave Williamson recovered well, finishing the night stages in third place, albeit six minutes behind the Damso Toyota. Serge starts day two the leader, but cautious of the charging Duncan. The problem we had last night, uh, we had a bit of dust problems. And uh, two of the stages, it took some time off us, but we managed to make up quite a bit of time last night on them. So um, it depends on today what type of roads we're going to have. I think it's quite quick. But um, I've got a nice lead, so I'm just waiting until tonight again, and then they can have the dust tonight. Scrobler has also noted the Selica's charge up the scoreboard. We had a good run till last night and uh, we had some fuel pressure problems last night and we hope we can sort it out now because of the rules we're not uh, really allowed to work on the car in between the stages otherwise you lose time. So we're going to try and fix it this morning on the long open section and uh, yeah the Toyota is in our next and it's very fast. It's turbocharged and I hope we can stay in front of it today. On stage 12, a long 35 kilometer run through the cane fields of northern Swaziland, Serge sets a time of 22 minutes and 46 seconds at an average speed of 91.5 kilometers an hour. Hannes overdoes things, losing time with this high speed slide. End of the stage, the Nissan motor sounds decidedly offbeat. Hannes, we heard you on stage 12 and the motor certainly wasn't healthy. You lost a lot of time. Are you out of the rally at this stage? Yeah, we are. We just sorted the fuel pressure problems out on this one and uh, unlucky for us, the valve ring pulled over the retainer and we're only on three cylinders. And if it wasn't that far still to go, I would have went on three cylinders, but... Um, it's too far, so we're pulling out. 